Hi! <laughs> We're back! Sorry. We've, we've been kind of lazy on the filming front. We're bad booktubers. We're bad. We've been reading. Oh. Somewhat. Yeah. Most of you. She's on a bad. Horrible. Like, slump. you started out so good when you got your tablet, and then it's been downhill since then. <laughs> well, you gotta think, since I've gotten my tablet, I've increased my workload at work. Yeah, but remember that? You were like... She was like... Five here, six here, ten here, nine here! Twelve in the month of January. Yeah. Only. Yeah. You, and you're like, I don't want to read anymore. Like, I'm done! No, it's not that I'm done. I just, we love I gotta, her. I just gotta sit down and read. Yeah, At read. least, like you said, maybe yeah. a chapter or two a night. Before bed, just chill out. So when bed, you, when, when that's all you do. Yes, but this is reading for fun. It's not Exactly. Easy. It's totally different. I it's mean, I understand. Escape. Plus, you're not on your computer. You're on a, in book. Real books. Yeah. Paper. Different. So okay. Just reading on that. Okay, totally off subject. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki! Okay, I had a really good reading one from January. And then it went slowly downhill. <laughs> and I'm sorry if I don't give good reviews of these books because I don't remember half of them. Oops. It was a long time ago and I was reading a lot of books and I was like, yay! And then I'm like, no. <laughs> I was still kind of reading Christmas books in the beginning of January and a little in February too. I just couldn't, I couldn't let Christmas go. <laughs> At least reading wise. And taking down the Christmas tree was. It's gone now, though. <laughs> okay, first book I read in January The Gingerbread Cookie Murder by Joanna Fluke, Laura Levine, and Leslie Meyer. That that had, um, Joanna Fluke is the one who writes all those Hannah Swenson books, which I really like, and they made Hallmark movies out of them, and they were really cute. Are those ones with Allison? Yeah. Can't think of her last name, Sweeney. Yes, yes. Okay. The girl from the big. Sammy. No. Well, she's from Days. I don't. I've never watched. <laughs> I've never watched that stuff. Days are nice. Well, I I liked it. There was a couple story. Well, there was one story that I had a hard time getting into, but the other two was good. I liked Joanna Flukes. I think. I don't remember which other of the authors I didn't like as much. Because this was back in January. <laughs> so were they like short short stories? Yeah, they were. I mean, they were decent size because it was. I mean, the book was a good size book. Like so. little novellas that were. Yeah. Okay. They all wrapped up nicely, and they are all like murder mystery stories because that they're like cozy mysteries pretty much. Yeah. That all revolved around Christmas, and I liked them. It was a good Christmas book, and then I read Wish Upon a Christmas Cake by Darcy. Bolin. I apparently really liked this book. I gave it four stars. I don't remember what happened. <laughs> like, at all. Because during the Christmas season, I was trying to read so many Christmas books. They're kind of all melded into one giant Christmas book in my head. I don't know. But I liked it, so apparently I recommend it. And then, okay, and then I read Carry On. By Rainbow Rowell. I read this book in two days. I read it all day and all night until I finished it. I loved was, it. Was that the one you got twice? No, no that was um, Lenora and Park. Yeah. I got oh. twice, which I'm currently reading. I loved this book. I know people are split on if they loved it or not on BookTube, but I am in the camp of loving it. <laughs> And if you read Fangirl, you know about the story that the fan fiction she writes and the story she's into, which is pretty much like Harry Potter, if Harry Potter was in love with Malfoy. <laughs> 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 pretty much. <sighs> it's excellent. I loved it. Five stars. Okay, what's next? Oh, and then I read The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. I had a hard time with this one. The first half took me a while to really, really get into it. I can see why. But by the time I was halfway through it, I started to really, really get into it. And I liked it. I didn't think it was amazing. I, per like, 
really loved the second book, <laughs> which I have also read this month, The Infinite Sea. It was too short, but it was, like, action-packed, and I know a lot of people don't like it, <laughs> but I'm like, this one is so much better! So I like The Infinite Sea much better, which I read pretty much directly after reading that. Then I read The Proposal the in the Mediator books. It's like the novella that just came out prior to the new book that just came out. After how many years of Meg Cabot? Like, I thought the Mediator series was done. I had finished it a long time ago. I, like, read half of it from the library, and then I own the rest. And I love that series. And I was so excited when she started to just randomly start writing it again. <laughs> and so I read the novella before it, and I loved it. I didn't star rate it, but I loved it. So I imagine like four and a half, five. It was a novella, it was quick, but you know, if you love the Mediator series, you will definitely love that. And I started the new Mediator book. I have not really gotten into it yet, but I'm sure I will also love that. <laughs> if I manage to finish it in the month of March, you will see it in the wrap up whenever we do that. <laughs> Probably in two months. <laughs> Oh, and then I read Never Never Part 3 by Taryn Fisher and Colleen Hoover. It's the last in the Never Never series. I loved it. It was so good. I wish they would just compile them and make them one book, because then I would actually buy it, because I would read that again. I really liked it. I liked the idea of them each ending on, like, a cliffhanger. But then you had to wait so long in between them, which wasn't fun, because I read them each as they came out. Torturous! But it ended good. I really enjoyed it. It ended a lot happier than I assumed it would. <laughs> the last book I read in January was Between the Spark and the Burn by Aunt April Genevieve. She <laughs> choke. <laughs> no one knows how to pronounce her name, and I certainly do not. But it was the second one in the, the second of the duet, or whatever you call them, in the Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. Oh, okay. okay. I finally, like, I read that one so long ago, and then I'm like, randomly, I should probably read the second one, because, you know, I had it on my Kindle, so I should just finish it. That's the series finish, not that it's an actual series, it's just the two. It's the duology, there's the word I was looking for. I liked it! Her writing is kind of weird sometimes, and these books are weird, but I like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how to, it's just, I don't know, I just really like the way she writes. And she has a new book coming out. I'm so excited for it. It comes out this month, I'm pretty sure. I have it written down somewhere, and I'm super excited. Moving on to February. I read another Christmas book. Peppermint Pandemonium, Sweet Home Mystery number five. And I haven't read one through four. So, just randomly. By the way, this is Constance Barker. I liked it. It was okay. It wasn't that long, but it took me a long time to read it just because I didn't, I don't know, I just had a hard time getting into it. I mean, it was cute, but I don't know if I necessarily need to read any others in the seri series. Words? I don't know them. Can't speak. <laughs> then I decided to break out from all my Christmas lovey-dovey books by reading a book about a male stripper. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. See, if you notice, in this wrap-up, I have not read a lot of erotica. I don't know what's wrong with me. I just decided, like, you know, last year I read a little too much erotica. <laughs> Time to pull it back. <laughs> <laughs> so this was called Review, a Wild Nights Novel by K.M. Goland. This was about... A photographer who goes on, they live in Australia, they're from Australia, and she goes on tour with this male review show. Thunder from down under. Pretty much, that's what okay. it's like. <laughs> it's bad that I know about them. Well, I know about them too. We've never seen them, but we know of them. Yes. And, you know, stuff happens, and obviously she falls, like, you know, she falls for the jerkiest guy there. First thing he did was break her very expensive camera. Ah. Yeah. I would have punched him in the face. Yeah. I would have... Reading these books, I get so angry. I'm like, <laughs> why are they such jerks? <laughs> and what would... Okay. I'm 
gonna be quiet on that one. I clearly didn't give it a star. I know it entertained me, but I didn't. I don't know if I was like, oh my god, it was awesome. I mean, it it's better than some of them <coughs> I've read, but. <laughs> I just remember he fought a lot and he slept with a lot of women. Ooh. Was it told from a guy's perspective? No, or? it was from the girl, the, okay. the photographer. And she wasn't like some needy girl either, which I liked. Yeah. Because I hate when they do that. Like yeah. some weak, needy girl. She wasn't like that. I liked her. I didn't really like him at all. Obviously, I did at the end because, you know, they end. Okay, I think it ended okay. I don't even remember. This is the worst wrap up I've ever done. Oh, finally! Oh, yes, I read *The Coldest Girl in Cold Town* by Holly Black. Finally, I've owned this book for over a year, and I finally read it. Holly Black is my favorite author. This is about vampires. If you haven't read it, you should read it, cause I love her. Do you have um the deep? Oh, in, the, in the in the darkest part of the forest. Yeah, I don't own it, but I've read it. Okay, it's amazing, and I love her fairy stuff more, cause like Tithe and Ironside and all that. <gasps> They're my favorite books ever. Mm -hmm. Like ever, and I love her. If there was ever, if I could only ever meet one author ever again, I would really like it to be Holly Black. <laughs> Maybe I'll read Tithe again. I know, I've been thinking about rereading them, because it's been a long time, and they're like my favorite books. And this, it'll count, because I haven't read it. Yeah, this it year. Yeah. So, obviously, this is a five-star book. It's been around for a while now. Most people have read it if they want to read it. If you haven't, I highly suggest it if you like vampires. Holly Black, excellent. I haven't read any of her middle grade stuff, though. Like, the books she's Spider doing. Wick. I haven't read Spiderwick. And I haven't read the books she's doing with Cassandra Clare. Oh, okay, those ones. But I might, just because it's Cassandra Clare and Holly Black. Yeah. I might have to read those. <laughs> and then I read The Walking Dark by Robin Wasserman. I gave it three stars. I know it took me a long time to read it. But for the life of me, I can't remember what happened. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't like it that much, because it wasn't memorable in any way. Oh, oh, oh. I know it was like a creepy book, but I just really don't remember. Because then we saw Deadpool, and that took over my life. <laughs> I did! <laughs> no then I'm like, let's just watch TV and movies all the time, and go see Deadpool. And Three read times. Deadpool comics and color in the Deadpool comic book thing, coloring book thing that I bought because I'm a sucker now, <laughs> and I love Deadpool. So that that kind of blew away my reading progress. <laughs> I'm blaming it on, on Ryan Deadpool. Reynolds totally. <laughs> I'm like, you ruined everything. I was doing so good, and then it stopped. <laughs> well, that is my very long, very crappy wrap up because I can't remember half the books I read. <laughs> so, I only, next person. <laughs> I only read one book, and that was in January. That was actually I didn't even read it. It was audiobook. It was a fifth wave. It's I can okay. kind of see why you had a hard time yeah, in the beginning it is kind with of her like, going through the past and and trying to catch you up yeah. with where she's at. But once the action her, started going, then, started then it's like, it. oh, God, yes. Yeah. Yes. We still haven't seen that. Is that out? Yeah. I think DVD? it's not. No. Not on DVD. I think it's in that in between. Uh, okay. We're waiting. We're waiting. So yeah, that's my one book. I didn't read anything last month. I actually read like I started reading like three. I was reading The Witch's Daughter, which I've been reading for two years. Now. Yeah, I know. She wanted it so bad for Christmas one year. She did. I bought it and then hey, she hasn't read it. I've doubled what I read the first <laughs> time. Okay, actually tripled what I read. Okay, so I've I'm reading that. I am also reading um, The Claiming of Sleeping Beauty, which that one is definitely going to take me a long time, just because by A. N. Roberta. By Anne Rice. Yeah, it's Anne Rice. 
Oh, is it? That's yeah. her That's other her pen name. Oh, okay. Pen name. And I The Witch's Daughter that. is by Paula Braxton. It's the first in the series, The Witch's Daughter. There is more than one. The other one, I can't remember the name of it. In another three or four years, we'll get to that one. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> but, yeah, so that's my wrap-up. Okay. So, for January, I started off reading Stardust by Neil Gaiman. Uh, it's a little bit more different. It... it it's different than the movie, but I liked it because you, it takes place a lot, like the time span from when he sees the falling star to the time that he actually gets to her. It actually is like a lot more time than what it is in the book or in the movie, but I really liked it. I like Neil Gaiman's writing anyway, so I knew I was going to like it anyway. Then, audiobook of The Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey. This would be the third time that I've read this book. Well, read. Uh, but the audiobook, I really did like it. Um, I, like the, I like how it was not one um, voice actor. It was actually two. Three. No, it was actually two. So the one who did Ben and it was the same guy both it was, times? Yes, he just did different voices. Huh. So that was okay. a really good experience, I guess you could say. Um, it is confusing as far as like the character changes because he doesn't warn you. So yeah. you're reading and you're reading and you think you're getting Cassie's point of view but and then it not. changes and you're like... Who's this guy right now? What? So, but That's, you kind yeah. of get a clue from the title chapter. And but, the voice. But well, if you're not... Yeah, I wasn't listening to if it. If you're not listening it. to it, you're like... Oh. It took me like a couple, like, wait, who am I reading? Yeah, you, you, you kind of go back and you're like, what happened here? But, yeah, that that is what it is. And then, um... I read Fifty Shades Darker... I've been taking forever with this because I want to punch. Give me the book back now. <laughs> I want to punch Anna and Christian every time I. <sighs> you think you want to push? <laughs> punch it's funny, you only have one left. It gets. It started out, and on the first page, I'm like, really, fucking, really. Ooh, excuse me. <laughs> Slip. <laughs> Literally, they were. I started scanning through. I uh, that's what I like, think I'm gonna have to do. I just I read all three of them in a don't, week. Well, she's like, he's he says he doesn't need to be that way anymore for her. But then she's like, I don't feel experienced enough. And then she's like pushing him to do it, kind of in a manipulative way. So it's like, she it's likes like, it. She doesn't like, want to admit she exactly. likes it. Exactly. But it's kind of like putting alcohol in front of an alcoholic. Yeah. I want to punch her. Okay. And then... And they're filming that movie right now. Oh, they are? Yeah. I can't wait to see it. I'm excited. I'll, I'll watch it. Maybe they're... I actually... Prefer I the movie? I, I like the movie. I didn't think they were as annoying as in the books. Not enough naked Christian. No. Tons of naked her. Which is annoying. Need anyway. more naked Christian. Yeah. And then I read The Infinite Sea by Rick Yancey. Oh my god. Talk about a mind blow. I actually had to set down the book and I was like, did, what? Yeah. What did I just read? It was read? so much better than the first one. So I, much. I had, I was like... I'm not talking that loud. Like, I'm not listening to you, too. I, I know. haven't read it. I'm not going to give any I know. spoilers. I know. I'm, I'm just going to read it. It is an you amazing read book. It while we I kind of got caught up on the hype um, from the size. I mean, it is a very small book. Yeah. But I like that we got different perspectives for the majority of the book. Yeah. And there's no downtime in that book. No, it is. <laughs> The pacing is amazing. Oh, oh crap. 
I was the just whole it was time. Just like it was accelerated, and I'm just like, whoa. Yeah, because I just read it because I figured I just read the fifth wave, so I should read it while it's fresh in my mind. Exactly. And then I'm like, oh my god, this is so much better. I'm like, how do people not like this book that actually have read it? A lot of people said it's not a needed book. It might not be needed, but it was fun. Exactly. I mean, we learned some things that I think at the end that were pretty useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That will be the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> and then for February, I kind of was on this weird... I had, like, three books started, but I couldn't, like, finish them or get into them. And then a co-worker was like, do you want to read some manga? And I'm like, man, what the hell, why not? I've never read them, never thought I would get into it. And it's uh, Vampire Night by Matsuri... Hino. Matsuri? Matsuri. Hino. Um, and I read one through eight, actually, um, for February. And then after that, I've, I'm on the 10th going into the 11th. So they're amazing. It's yeah. basically, it's basically like the, the theme of it is you follow Yuki Cross Zero. Can't remember his last name. And then you have Kaname. Kaname is a pure blood vampire. And then you have um, Zero and Yuki are part of an academy. And you have the day class and then you have the night class which is vampires which they kind of protect the day class from the night class and then you find out the workings and how Yuki and Zero are actually entwined in this oh my god I almost said zombie vampire <laughs> <laughs> the, the uh, vampire lifestyle lifestyle thank you not lifestyle but like yeah. their, their society. society um and then her dad, when I was reading it, I thought at first that the headmaster was a chick. It was the dad. It was, <laughs> it was her adoptive father. And <laughs> because he was, it looked like he was wearing furs and had a ponytail. <laughs> he's kind of questionable, but I kind of like him. It, he's kind of like, there's something off about him. Not, like, negative, but there's something, like, hmm. <laughs> there's something about you. I don't know. I just, I have an inkling about him, but it's getting really gook. Gook. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk because I'm excited about it. Um, it's really good. I like it. I gave it four stars. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend it. You can read it for free on mangapark.com. Um... And when you search for it, you can load the pages. It's like one, three, five, or all, and you can just scroll. The artwork is beautiful. I wish I had the books with me, but um, you returned to them. Amazing, so pretty. Like I wish I could draw like this girl does. <laughs> but that's it for me so far. So we'll see. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.